Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. I am so excited to bring you this next interview because it's with someone who's doing something totally different and really inspiring. His name is Lauren Zidomirsky, and he's running the Boston Marathon backwards. Yeah, take a listen. Uh, using the appropriate metaphor, since you are backward running, let's go backwards to look forward a little bit and start okay. with the most obvious question, which is, why backwards running? So I, uh, I lost my brother, Brian, to epilepsy before I was born. And my, my dad and I have been raising uh, money and awareness for epilepsy for the last 20 years. And I told myself that if I could qualify for the Boston Marathon, which is nearly impossible to do, I would go as big as possible with my fundraising and awareness campaign for epilepsy. And so I qualified. I trained really hard and I was able to do it. And I, uh, I, I started thinking, you know, what am I going to do? What, how can I raise awareness and money outside of my you know, network of friends and family? And then I went on the Guinness Book of World Records website, and I started looking at the records, and I stumbled upon the fastest marathon ever run backwards. And I said, you know what? I can do this. And I made it a goal. And what's your assessment of that goal? How challenging is it? Oh, it is. See now, I'm I'm almost to the race now, so I can kind of look back at uh, uh, the last ten months or so of running backwards, and it has been a struggle. It's been a very long road, full of injuries, ailments, falls. Uh, just, just it's just been so hard. I mean, running backwards is extremely difficult compared to forwards running, and it's just been it's. I've had to train my body to adapt to this new new form of movement. You know, it, I think it's made me a stronger person, and I'm, I'm glad I, I chose to do this. And that's what's beautiful, too, about the tribute to your brother, because you said there's a really interesting metaphor in having to run backwards that you feel connects with epilepsy. Tell us a little, little bit about that. It's, it's hit me recently that, you know, having epilepsy is like going through life backwards. You know, you really can't see what's ahead of you. Seizures can come out of nowhere. They can happen any time. And it's the same thing with backwards running. You know, I can't see where I'm going. And also this just the struggle that a lot of people with epilepsy face every day is similar to my struggle with backwards running, though. For me, it's only temporary. For them, it's it, it persists. When I was reading a little bit about your brother, I just couldn't help but think about your parents because that must have been just, I mean, I don't think there's words to describe. He, he, yeah. he passed away in his sleep. Yeah, he passed away in his sleep. Um, he, Brian was my half brother, um, so he was my dad's son, um, and it actually, it ended up probably being the last straw in his, my dad's first marriage. And he ended up divorcing, and then he met my mom, and uh, uh, they had three boys together. I'm the middle of, of three boys, um, but you know, for my dad, it was it was just so difficult. You know, I mean, I obviously wasn't alive, but he's told me. I mean, there were there was a year or two there where he felt lost and. Um, he found a lot of uh, help and consolation from the the epilepsy community, and that's that's why we we started giving back and raising money and awareness. For, for I like had that. no idea that one in twenty six people will have epilepsy at some at some point in their it's life. Crazy. Is that the right yeah. statistic? I had no yeah. idea. It's crazy. Yeah, one in twenty six people will be diagnosed with epilepsy during their lifetime, and also one in ten people will have a seizure in their lifetime. Now, just because you have a seizure doesn't mean that uh, you have epilepsy. Um, generally, uh, you're diagnosed with epilepsy when you've had two unprovoked seizures. Um, so sometimes somebody will have a seizure after like a car accident or some sort of uh, head trauma or traumatic experience, and then they'll never have a seizure again. Other people, they'll go, they'll they'll uh, have a car accident and they'll actually develop epilepsy or, you know, you know, they can have a seizure out of nowhere. And then before they know it, they're having tons of seizures. So it's such a mysterious disorder. And, you know, so much more research uh, is necessary to, to kind of figure out, like, how can we end epilepsy? Now, I have a couple more fun questions for you, just in general. I, I've, I've run one marathon. I think oh, that nice. I think that might be it. <laughs> I'm gonna check that box. Um, but I was I was doing a little research on you. 
And I, I came across this comment on Twitter from a stranger, but I thought it really summed up something. So I'm going to read it to you. It's from Dan Tallarico. He said, I'm running my second Boston Marathon this year, but the only thing my dad is excited about and has asked me about multiple times is this guy running backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, that's, so you're getting a lot of attention. So here's here, okay. Here's a couple of just basic questions. What are your favorite running shoes? Uh, I run in Sockenies. Okay, and did you have to change running shoes when you started running backwards rather than forwards? Well, it's funny. I actually reached out to the woman who has the fastest uh, backwards marathon record, and I asked her about the running shoes, and she reckon she recommended Hoka's. Oh, okay. And so I I tried those out for several re- weeks, but it was causing issues with my feet and it just wasn't working. So I just went back to what I run all my marathons in, which are Saucony rides. Okay. And your fastest marathon so far running forwards is what? Uh, three hours. Okay. So you're flying basically like that is so fast. <laughs> yeah. How fast can you run backwards? For a marathon? Yeah. Hopefully three hours and 43 minutes and 39 seconds. Okay, to break the world record. And so <laughs> break the world record, if you yeah. can give yourself, I mean, you know, we're going to do positive thinking. We're sending you positive vibes. But, you know, are you are you think you're going to be under that? You're like, how close are you <laughs> to that? I, I am confident that I can do it, that I can break the world record. But it's literally going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Okay. Um, it is so difficult to run backwards at that pace and to do it for, you know, three hours and 40 minutes and change is going to be so very difficult. And I'll probably be crying and screaming at the top of my lungs for the last six miles of the race. Actually, Perfect. I, I mean, that's about how I was and I ran forward. So I feel like <laughs> that's pretty normal. Um, but <laughs> yeah, you're going to yeah. have a spotter that's running yeah. with you. Yeah, I have a spotter. His name's Jim, and uh, he's a, also a three-hour marathon runner. So he's he's a very strong runner, and he basically acts as the uh, the eyes that I don't have in the back of my head. <laughs> okay, so when you're running backwards and you're passing people, do you make eye contact and like give them a little, <laughs> or like what do you do? Yeah, I mean it's it's funny when you're running backwards, you can literally you see everybody so you're face to face with you know during a big race you're face to face with the entire crowd and everybody is just staring at you (laughs) it's it's kind of an awkward thing um but when i'm out like running let's say in griffith park here in los angeles yeah when i pass people when i'm running backwards and they're running forwards there's that moment where we're you know face to face right they stare me down (laughs) sometimes they smile other times i feel like I don't want to say they give me dirty looks, but it's kind of like, why are you trying to show off? <laughs> right, right, Mr. Backwards Runner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has your body changed, like, from running backwards? I've lost over 10 pounds since December. I've uh, I've lost a little bit of muscle, but I've lost a ton of fat. Most of that 10 pounds is all fat. Wow. So, it, and, and I haven't necessarily changed my diet. So all of that is really just from the backwards running, which uh, backwards running – requires so much more energy than forwards running. I mean, I can't literally cannot stop eating. Um, luckily, luckily I have a very loving, supportive wife who cooks me who feeds you. wonderful <laughs> meals and feeds me and, uh, and is also supportive in many other ways. But I, I honestly, I don't know if I'd be able to do this without her. What's, what's your day job again? Uh, I'm a motion picture production attorney. I listen to the Lion King soundtrack and Beauty and the Beast at least 4,000 times a week in the car with my kids. <laughs> Beauty, Beauty, Beauty and the Beast was my movie. I yes, I know. So here's, yeah. this was one of the burning questions I had for you. Yeah, yeah. While you're training for the marathon, do you listen to Disney tunes? <laughs> no, you want, you, want to, you want to know what I listen to? I, yeah. listen to I almost listen to the same thing every single run. I listen to the Hamilton soundtrack. I totally get that. I totally understand that. What's your favorite the, track? Uh, uh, my shot. Yes. yes. Yeah. And it's like the beat of every single one of those songs is like perfect for working out. What have you learned along the way? <sighs> you know, I've learned that um, never to give up. I know that sounds, that's very cliche, but um, you know, when I set this goal last June, there were a couple moments there. Actually, there were several moments where I thought, you know, maybe this is impossible. Maybe my calves are literally going to explode because that's how it felt in December. I I literally thought my calves were going to give out. Um, And then, you know, I fell and had to go to the hospital one time 
but you know, after after every single incident that I had and every sort of uh, sense of doubt, I just stuck with it, and um, and that's how I got to where I am today. I really appreciate it, and we're going to be rooting you on. Thanks, Jenna. Can't I wait. I really appreciate it.